Welcome everyone. So today we are going to continue our conversation on linear functions. We will discuss some special lines and some particular behaviors with lines and we are going to conclude with a, a relevant um, example or model uh, of something you, you encounter even today uh, at your age. Um, so the first thing I want to um, say is uh, we have addressed the four forms of linear functions and the one you feel comfortable with is y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form. But sometimes you have an equation of a line that is equal to a constant. It's just a constant, like y equals 3. And what this means is 3 is absent. I'm sorry, x is absent. So think of it this way, y equals mx plus b, where m is 0, because that's the only way you're going to have y equals a constant, if you force m to be 0. And what it means is, no matter what x you pick, this quantity will always be 0, and 0 plus b will be y. So y equals a constant y equals a constant, means the slope is zero. And I'll visualize it for you. So imagine, imagine y equals 3 when x is zero. So that's here. And since x is arbitrary, no matter what x you pick, the slope is zero. That's the only way you get a constant. Let's say x equals 1. So when x equals 1, y is 3. When x equals 2, y is 3. When x equals 1.1, y is 3. And what happens is you end up with an infinitely many points across the point called 0, 3. In other words, no matter what x is, y is always 3. No matter what x is, y is always 3. So basically what this says is, this is a horizontal line, still a line. It is horizontal when x is arbitrary and y is stubborn. y is always 3, no matter what x is. So think of whenever you see y equals a constant, you just got to have to draw a horizontal line through any points x comma 3 0 comma 3 or 1 comma 3 or 2 comma 3 and so on and so forth conversely if you have the other variable called the independent variable equals a constant that means y you don't see y here that means y is arbitrary so what does that mean it means when x is 2, y is anything. So let's say y is 0. When x is 2, y is 0. So that gives me this point. When x is 2, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 2, y is negative 1. So basically you get a bunch of points along this line. So x equals 2 is just another line. It happens to be vertical, not horizontal, but it has to go through 2 when x is 2. Feel free to write 2, 0, or 2, 1, or 2, 2, or 200, or 2, negative 100. It's just going to have to be this line, not this line, not that line, but a line through the point, let's say, 2, 0, or 2, comma, something. So the general points are 2, comma, y for this uh, for this equation. This means when x is 2, y is arbitrary. This says when y is 3, x is arbitrary. In here, it's a horizontal line. That means the steepness is 0. The slope means stands for the steepness. Isn't that true? Slope is 0. For In this case, notice that this is not a function, is it? Vertical lines are not functions because for x equals 2, you could have many y's. So imagine you has mailbox number one, 
mailbox number two, mailbox number three, mailbox number n, right? So these are not functions. These are not functions. And therefore, you're not going to be able to write them in the other forms, the other three forms. In fact, you couldn't write them in any of the four forms because these are not functions. This can be written in all the other forms, in all the forms if you care. This one you cannot. So what's the slope of this line? We know the slope of this line is zero, right? It's zero. The slope of this line is undefined. The slope of this line is undefined. Let me visualize this for you quickly. So let's pick these two points and let's find the slope. So I'm going to go in this direction. 1 minus 0 over 2 minus 2. So the slope is 1 over 0. And you cannot divide by 0. So the slope is undefined. Okay. So, so these are two special lines that are need a little bit of attention and just pay attention to them. So whenever you have y equals a constant, it's a horizontal line with slope zero. Whenever you have x equals a constant, it's a vertical line with slope undefined, okay? Because this is not a function. The next thing quickly is, this is obvious to you. If two lines are parallel, if two lines are parallel, That means they have to have the same slope, the same steepness. Isn't that true? Okay. I'm sure you've seen this before. And I'm going to work out an example. The one you probably don't know, but even if you do know, you probably don't know why this formula. If two lines are perpendicular, if two lines are perpendicular, the slope of one of them, let's call it M1, and the slope of the second one, there is a special relationship between these two slopes. And that relationship is that their product is negative 1. Okay? Now, some books or students or teachers, they, could write, they might write it like this. M1 is negative 1 over M2. Or you could say M2 is negative 1 over M1 right or simply write the product think of this put a one here for fun m1 times m2 is negative one m2 times m1 is negative one okay it's the same thing so i like this one because it doesn't really involve fractions and if i write it like this you may not necessarily think of that and vice versa, right? So it's better to think of it this way. The product of the slopes is negative 1. But in here, the slopes are the same. So let's work out an example, okay? Let me erase this. Let's work out an example. Imagine I have, um, um, I have a line. I have a line that goes through these two points, okay? So here is a point called A. The point is 1, 2. Here it is. And the point B, the coordinates of point B is 5, 4. Here it is. So I can draw this line. So this is the line, L1, line 1, that goes through these two points. I have another line that goes through these two points. This point is 2, 4. I put it in red. 2, 4. Here it is. And then another point called 3, comma. A. So here is the question. I want to find this letter A or X or J or M or Q, whatever. I want to find this A so that this green line is parallel to the line through C comma D. Now D is 3A. 3A means 3 for X and Y. I don't know. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, right? That's why I put these dots. D, the point D has, has to be on this line, somewhere in here. What D, where do I put D so that CD is parallel to AB? That's the question. So for example, let's say D is here. Well, if I connect CD, CD, it looks like that line will intersect this line. We don't want them to intersect. We want them to be parallel. So if I could just eyeball it, it probably is here. Because if I extend that line, it looks 
parallel to this line. And I want to know the y value called a. I know the x value is 3. If this point, if the point D is here, then A is here. A is the Y value. A for Y and 3 for X, right? So find A so that the green line is parallel to the line through CD. I'm going to draw it in red. So how do we figure that out? It's very easy. Parallel means their slopes are the same. So we go to the first line and let's find the slope of this line. Easy. It's 4 minus 2 over 5 minus 1. 4 minus over 5 minus 1 gave me a half. So the slope of this line is a half. Let's find the slope of this point, uh, of this line. Now I know it has A, and that's fine, because we're trying to solve for A. So what's the slope of this line? It's A minus 4 over 3 minus 2. A minus 4 over 3 minus 2. Now 3 minus 2 is just 1. So the slope of the second line, which I haven't drawn yet, is a minus 4. And the slope of the first line is 1 half. And for them to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So I'm going to force this slope to be that slope. That's all I'm going to do. Half equals a minus 4. Solve for a. Add 4 to both sides, and you get 9 over 2, or 4.5. So let's see what 4.5 is. 4.5, this is 2, 4, 4.5 is somewhere in here. So the point D must be here, exactly what we anticipated. So if I draw that line where A is 4.5 right there, the lines will be parallel. So I'm going to keep the same problem. I'm going to do another problem. Find A so that this line, the green line, is perpendicular, not parallel, but perpendicular to the same, to another line called C comma something. So, now we know 3, X is 3. We want to find A so that this new line is perpendicular to the green. So, for parallel, we assume D is somewhere, uh, A is somewhere in here. A is 4.5, and we found it. Now, let's just eyeball this and see where D sh where A could be, which means where is the point D? If Let's say the point D is here, which means little a is here. That line here does intersect the green, but it doesn't look perpendicular. Perpendicular one would mean, um, where should I put the points? That's the question, right? Where should I put the points? If we could just eyeball it, where should I put the points? Let's say I put it here. The point D is here, which means A is here. If the point D is here, it looks reasonable. It's going to be perpendicular, give or take. So we know the point D should be somewhere in here. 3, comma, maybe 2, maybe 1.5 or 1.9. It's going to have to be somewhere in here. Let's find it, okay? So, use the same points, like the one I just did, and find the point, the number A, the letter A, the parameter A, so that the lines are perpendicular. Well, we already found the slope of the first line, didn't we? We already found the slope of the second line, didn't we? Now, I don't want to set them up to be equal. I want this formula now. I want to use this formula. I want the product to be negative 1. So let's multiply them. Multiply this by this. And force that to be negative 1. That's what the formula calls for. Okay? So um, I'm going to bring the half here, which means multiply both sides by 2. I get a minus 4. a minus 4 equals negative 2. And then I add 4. I get 2. So, if I go back here, I was kind of right. When a is 2 and x is 3, x is 3, a is 2, should be somewhere in here. So, the point D, this point D, should be somewhere in here. So, that's when I connect C to D, the green line and the red line, I'll put it now since I finished. So, the point D has to be here. When x is 3, we know that x is 3, but a I found to be 2. 
So let's put two here. So therefore, the point D here. Now, if I connect this red line, now we know it is perpendicular to the green line, assuming A, A is 2. Why? Because I just proved it. Okay? Finally, I want to conclude with um, a practical example. And this is something you have witnessed before. Um, let's say you have two phone companies, phone companies. One of you want to charge you five cents a minute. That's it, just five cents a minute. And the other one gives you a little break, charges you four cents a minute. However, they want to hit you with some, um, with some fee upfront, an upfront fee of $10. And the question is, what company would you choose? Now, just using a little bit of common sense first, if you plan to speak just for, let's say, I don't know, 60 minutes. Well, if you speak for 60 minutes, would you go with company A or company B? Company A will charge you 60 minutes times 5 cents. So that's $3. Company B will charge you four cents times 60 that's two dollars and 40 cents instead of three dollars however they're going to hit you with ten dollars so now you're going to pay twelve dollars and 40 cents but in here you only pay three dollars so it seems to me that if if you don't plan for sp to speak for a long time company a might make sense but if you plan to speak for i don't know 10 years this might make sense because this is almost going to disappear over the so many years. You, you're going to end up paying like nothing a day if you speak for 10 years. And, and you're going to save. Don't think it's only $0.04. Cents. That's 20% discount compared to this one. Think about it that way. So would you rather take 20% discount and pay $10 up front if you, tend to, if you plan to speak for a for many months or for many years? Most likely the answer is yes. So it seems to me that if you plan to speak for a very few minutes, maybe just one day or whatever, company A makes sense. If you plan to speak for a long time, company B makes sense. And therefore the question becomes, when does it make sense? When is the break even point? Is there a number of minutes where it should not ma matter whether you pick A or B. Because at some point, company A makes sense. At some other time, company B makes sense. So there is a place where they are actually the same. They're giving you the same value. When is that time? That is called the break-even points. And we want to know what it is. Let's say the break-even point is uh, 200 minutes. That means if you plan to speak for more than 200 minutes, company B will make sense. If you plan to speak for less than 200 minutes, company A makes sense. This is assuming the break-even point is 200 minutes. Well, let's find that break-even point. And this is why I'm doing this. So for company A, the phone, con, the phone company A, they are charging you five cents a minute. That's the slope, right? And there is no upfront fee. So the wine receipt is zero. So the price or the pay, let's call it the pay. I called it P1 and P2 because there are two companies, okay? The price or the pay will have to be 0.05 T. Your independence variable is time and your dependence variable is the pay or the price. I didn't write five, I wrote 0.05 because I'm doing it in dollars, okay? Company B on the other hand charges you four cents a minute or 0.04 dollars per minute, per hour. So that's the slope. Clearly, that's the slope. It's a rate. Isn't that a rate? Something per something. These are slopes, okay? Um, and I'm using the y equals mx plus b, the slope intercepts form. Now, the y intercepts, the initial value, the initial price is $10, okay? So this is the function for company B. This is the function for company A. So to find the break-even points, we're going to force the prices or the pays to be the same. Isn't that true? In other words, there will be some time where it doesn't matter 
if you go with company A and pay this price or go with company B and pay this price. So we're going to force them to be equal. And we want to find that time, okay? So, um, so we're going to force 0 0.05, this is now in dollars, to be 0 0.04 T plus 10 dollars. This is in dollars, so I converted these into dollars, okay? I want to make sure everything is in dollars. Therefore, um, if I subtract, see, I got to combine these two guys, because these are T's and these are constants. So these are T's and these are constants. So I'm going to subtract this number here. So that's going to give me 0 0.01 T equals $10. And if I divide by 0 0.01, I get 1,000. It's not minutes, sorry. It's hours, right? Because I convert everything into... Uh, no, no, that's correct. 1,000 minutes. So everything, see, I converted pennies into dollars. But the time did not change. It's still in minutes. Okay, so my time is in minutes. So that's 1,000 minutes. So apparently it looks like if I plan, if my plan is to speak for a thousand minutes or less, this might make more sense. I don't mind paying more because I don't have to pay $10. But if I plan to speak for more than a thousand minutes, this is better. Even though I'm paying $10, getting a 20% off is a better deal long term. This is a long term deal. This is a short-term deal. Make sense? So I'm going to visualize this for you. So let's go with plan A. This is my function, 0.05t. So the pay is 0.05t. So let's pick two points because I want to draw the line, right? When t is 0, the pay is 0. Makes sense. If you don't speak, you don't pay. If you speak for 100 minutes, I made a nice number so that the price is a nice number. If I speak for 100 minutes, 100 minutes times 0.05 dollars is exactly five dollars. So this is in dollars, this is in minutes. So here is the point zero zero zero, and here is the point 105. I I made this to be 100 in green, and here is five. So I have a point here, I have a point here, I connect the two points. So that's the line for plan one. This is P equals 0 0.05 T. That's the equation of that line, and it corresponds to plan one, okay, in green. So the stuff in green is company A, and that's the line. Company B, on the other hand, I had 0.04t, p is 0.04t plus $10. So that means when t is 0, if you don't speak, you would have spent $10 because this is an upfront fee. This is the y-intercept, initial value, initial price, initial anything, okay? And if I speak for 100 minutes, I just made the same number. It doesn't matter what X I pick. I picked 100. Now, if I pick 100, 100 times 0 0.04 is $4. And 4 plus 10 is $14. So if I speak for 100 minutes, see, plan B is still more expensive when I speak for 100 minutes. $5 is a much better deal than $14, right? So, so 0, 10. Here is 0, 10. So that's the first point. The second point is 114. 100 in red, not green, same. 114. So if that's 5, that's 10. That's about 15. I went down a little bit. That's 14. Here is the second point. And here is the line. And that's plan 2. And its equation is P equals 0 0.04 T plus 10 or $10. Okay? Now, Notice what happens. This, the equation of this line, sorry, the slope of this line is small, but it's definitely bigger than this one. So this slope here of the green is a little steeper than the red. So the green, imagine you are hiking, you're going to feel it on the green a lot more than you would feel it on the red. 
I know both slopes are small. It's almost like flats. But this slope is bigger than that slope. That means this green is a little steeper than the red. The flip side is on the green, even though it's steeper, it starts at the bottom, 0, 0. However, the red one is less steep, but it starts at the top. It starts at 0, 10 instead of 0, 0. So it starts here, and it's less steep than the other one. Because they don't have the same slope, they cannot be parallel, right? And because they're not parallel, that means they're going to meet. And guess where they're going to meet? Exactly at 1,000. How do I know? Because I did it. <laughs> right? So at, at minute 1,000, they're going to meet. So notice what happens. Between minute 0 and minute 1,000, the pay for the green is lower than the pay for the red. That means company A or 1 is better deal than company B or 2. Right? I don't want to pay $10 additional, even though I pay $0.05 cents a minute instead of $0.04 cents a minute. At 1,000 minutes, the break-even points. Break-even points. In other words, if you are going to speak exactly for 1,000 minutes, it makes no difference between whether or not you pick this deal, this company, or that company. It doesn't make a difference. Now watch what happens when you cross over. When you pass 1,000, let's say you're here at this time here, I don't know, 2,000 minutes or whatever, the red one is cheaper. It was more expensive. You see, it's higher. This is the pay. The higher you are, the more you pay. So the red was more expensive than the green. After the break-even points, they flip-flop. The green is more expensive than the red. And that is essentially the point I'm trying to make. I'm going to conclude with the following. Clearly, you just need two points to draw a line. If I have two points, these are sufficient to draw a line. I don't want to see 5,000 points. Two points are sufficient. One point, second point, draw the line. Notice you don't stop between the two points. Let's say one point is here and one point is here. Don't draw the line like this. You've got to extend it, okay? These just give you direction of the line. So I extended it. And my second plan, I picked two points, 0, 10, and then 114. Here are my two points, and I extended the line. But notice I didn't ex extend it in this direction. And that's a different discussion. Because we know time has to be 0 or positive. There is no such thing as negative time. So I'm going to erase... I'm going to erase this. I don't need it. And also, the pay, you're going to pay. The least you can pay, the least you will pay is $0. You will always pay more when you sign up for a phone company. That's how they make money. So there is no negative Y axis. So what I want to see, when you are dealing with situations like this, you know, you need to think of your two variables. T has to be zero or positive. The pay has to be zero, has to be either zero or positive, and therefore you must sketch your lines in the first quadrant. This is called first quadrant, second, third, fourth. You must work here. Okay. The other thing is, um, while you're working in the first quadrant, you need to extend your line be, uh, beyond the points. Beyond the points. You've got to extend the line. In fact, you should put arrows. You should put arrows here. Okay? So basically, you, are, you have rays. And you're, let's say your two points are here. You have a ray in this direction, and it stops here. And same thing for the red. Let's say you have a point here, the first point here, 0, 0, or 0, 10. And the other point here, you pass the two points. You pass them with an arrow. 
but you gotta stop on the first quadrant. You're not supposed to draw the line be, be, uh, beyond the first quadrant because it doesn't make sense. Because I've seen this before that people just continue with the green line and the red line. You should work in the first quadrant. So I hope this is helpful. And uh, it's been 30 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. And until next time.